Welcome to this lesson using C's built-in character functions. Previously, we examined C's standard library. We looked at functions like abs that returns the absolute value, square root, which returns the square root of a value. In this lesson, we'll look at functions that deal with characters. We may convert a character to uppercase, lowercase, test of a character's alphanumeric, and so on. So let's go ahead and get started. C programmers describe characters as being a letter of the alphabet, alpha, being numeric, or being a control character. The first function we'll look at is, is alpha. It tests to see whether or not a character contains a letter of the alphabet, either upper or lower case, such as A through Z. You can see that the function is defined in the header file, ctype.h. We're going to use similar code for a lot of functions we look at in this lesson, and we'll first start out by creating a character string array and initializing it to a character sequence, some uppercase letters, some lowercase letters, some numbers, and some control sequences, such as a tab or new line. The code will then use a for loop to loop through the characters of the array, initializes its counter to zero, the first character in the array, and loops as long as the character that's pointed to is not equal to null, which ends the loop. Within the loop, it uses the isAlpha function to test that specific character to see whether or not it's a letter. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we have. And sure enough, of our character strings, the upper and lowercase letters match as being an alpha character. In the previous program, we checked to see if a character was an uppercase A through Z or a lowercase A through Z. In this program, we'll check to see whether or not a character is numeric, 0 through 9. You can see that we're using the same program structure. We initialize an array of character strings to upper and lowercase letters, numeric digits, as well as some control sequences. And then we loop through that string, looking at each letter, using the is out noon to see whether or not a character is a letter or a number. Is it alphanumeric? Let's go ahead and run this and see what we have. And sure enough, the upper and lowercase letters are alpha and the digits are numeric. And so the program displays that alphanumeric characters. So, so far we've tested to see whether or not a character contains an alpha, upper or lowercase a through Z, an alphanumeric, which would be those same characters plus zero through nine. In this case, we'll test whether or not a character is a digit, zero through nine. Again, using the same program structure, define an array of characters, and then initialize it to some upper and lower case, some digits, and some control sequences, and then loop through it using is digit to see whether or not the character is zero through nine. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we have. And sure enough, the values 1, 2, 3 show up as digits. As you've learned, in C, a character variable can contain the values minus 128 to 127. And typically, programmers will refer to the values 0 through 127 as ASCII characters. They contain the characters that we print and display on the screen. So using the isASCII function, we can test whether or not a character is in that value range. And depending on your compiler, the function may be named slightly different. And the compiler I'm using, it's underscore underscore is ASCII. But we're using the same program structure. We're declaring a string array, assigning it some values. In this case, we're not testing control sequences. We just have upper and lowercase letters. And we're looping through those to see whether or not they contain an ASCII value. Let's go ahead and run this. And so you can see that the program loops through the characters of the string, and then it ends by testing a value 255, which could be an extended ASCII character. Typically, the characters 128 through 255 are called extended ASCII characters. And so we tested one of those, and the function came back and said, no, that value is not an ASCII character. So just as we can test whether or not a character is alpha, alphanumeric, or a digit, we can also test whether or not it contains a control sequence, such as a tab, carriage return, or new line. 
In this function, we'll use the isControl function to test the characters and display whether or not it contains a control character. If it does, we're going to convert the value to a decimal so we can see which ASCII value it is. And so when we do that, we're taking a character value and trying to display it as a decimal. So you can see that we use the int cast within our printf statement to do that conversion. If we don't do that, we might either get a syntax error or a compiler warning that we're trying to print a character using the percent %d format specifier. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we have. And so it says 9 is a control character and 10 is a control character. If we looked at an ASCII chart, we'd see that the tab is ASCII 9 and the new line, the carriage return, is an ASCII 10. In this program, we use the isGraph function that's defined in the header file ctype.h to determine whether or not a character would create a displayable or graphic character on the screen display. And so a letter would, a number would, a tab wouldn't. It's not a displayable character. It adjusts where the cursor position is. A new line doesn't print. It adjusts where the cursor is. And so we can test to see which characters are printable. Let's go ahead and run this. And you can see that it displays our alphanumeric characters as printable, um, but not our control sequences. Two common character functions are is lower and is upper, which tests whether or not a character is an uppercase character or a lowercase character. Both are defined in the header file ctype.h. In this case, we're going to loop through our character string, which has some upper and lower case, some digits, and some control sequences, and we'll print the ones that are uppercase and lowercase. And so you can see it's identified the letters A, B, C as either uppercase or lowercase letters. There may be times as we parse a character string, meaning as we look through the characters within a character string, that we want to know whether or not a character is a punctuation symbol, a period, a comma, a semicolon. So in this case, we've initialized a character string to contain some alphanumeric characters, some control sequences, as well as some punctuation symbols. We're going to use the isPunct function, which is defined in the ctype.h header file, to test for punctuation symbols. When we run this program, you can see it identifies the period, comma, and semicolon as punctuation. C programmers describe white space as a space character, a new line, a tab, anything that creates space within output. And so we can use the isSpace function, which is defined in a header file ctype.h, to test whether or not a character is a white space character. And so depending on the processing that we're performing, there may be times as we parse a string that will separate values using white space. So this program uses a function and loops through a string that has a space, a tab, a new line, as well as some alphanumeric characters. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we have. It displays values in decimal, so we can see the corresponding decimal ASCII value. So 32 corresponds to a space, 9 is a tab, 10 is the carriage return line feed. You can see that to display the values in decimal, the program cast using the int cast, the character value that it's currently being displayed, so it can use the percent %d format specifier within printf. Depending on the string you're parsing, there may be times when you want to know whether or not a character contains a hexadecimal letter. So that'd be the numbers 0 through 9 or the letters a through f. In this case, we're using the is x digit which is defined in ctype.h to determine whether or not a letter is a hexadecimal digit. When we run this, it says ABC, which are valid hex digits, are, as well as 1, 2, 3, which are valid hex numeric digits, are as well. Now, earlier we learned to use the is upper and is lower functions to test whether or not a character is uppercase or lowercase. And in this case, we're using the two upper and two lower to convert a character 
to either uppercase or lowercase. The functions are defined in the header file ctype.h. In this case, we're defining our character string, initializing it with some alphanumeric values as well as some control sequences. We're then creating an array called upper that can hold 64 characters, an array called lower which can hold 64 characters, and a counter variable that we'll use to loop through our strings. And so in this case, we're going to loop through the strings, assigning the values of the string that are uppercase or lowercase. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we have. And sure enough, it's converted our string to both upper and lowercase letters appropriately. So what will you learn next? So as you've learned to change a parameter's value within a C function, you must pass a pointer, the address to the variable in memory. In the next lesson, you'll examine C pointer operations in detail. In this case, we've got a couple of statements. The first one declares an integer variable named value and assigns it to value zero. The second one declares a pointer to an integer variable and it assigns it the address of that variable value. You can see that the ampersand is the C address operator, which gets us an address that we can assign to a pointer. 